Hey guys, today is June 19th, 2013, and this time of year, I don't want to spend a lot of time in a greenhouse. It's just so hot when it's 85, 90, 95 degrees outside. You can add usually 10, 15, sometimes 20 degrees to that, and it's, it's cooking inside here. But today is a pretty day, not too bad at all. So I want to take a few minutes and show you some very mature pepper plants and what just one or two plants are capable of producing. The reason I say very mature, I've got a super datil or datil, depending on how you pronounce it, and a Trinidad scorpion right here. Both of these were transplanted, put in the ground in this little bed right here in April of last year. At the end of the year, I cut them back to about this high, just went across the top, mowed them down, not trying to do anything fancy with it. I kept it warm enough here in the greenhouse going through the winter so these things didn't die off. They kind of grew real slow back when it was so cold, but as soon as it started to warm up, they really, really kicked in gear. The whole bed back here is nothing but a mass of roots. These things are just huge what they have up under the ground. My sole purpose for saving these two plants was to have peppers to make pepper spray, to spray on my garden. I can't eat these. They're just way, way too hot for me, and for most people around here, nobody can eat them. So I'm trying to grow them out the rest of this year and I'm going to pick these things and I'm going to freeze them and save them and I shouldn't have to grow any of these for a very long time. There's enough on them right here to last me for several years already. I'm going to try to raise this up and give you some idea of just how many peppers are on this plant. This thing is so heavy it can't even hold the branches up. Look at the peppers up under here. You could pick these things just by the handful right now tons and tons of peppers. Somebody commented on a video recently they had one that had probably like 40 peppers on it and I replied back that I've had a plant that probably had about 200 but looking at this thing there's probably several hundred peppers on this one plant right here. Just incredible. On the back side of this the super daytail just takes up that corner and the Trinidad scorpion pretty much takes up the whole bed and now I want you to look at the fully ripe scorpion peppers up on this plant. Just tons and tons of them in here. If you were into pepper production and you were trying to sell peppers, you wouldn't need but just a few to make you a killing. From what I had seen online, the people that were selling the seed, they were making an arm and a leg off of just one pepper. Just amazing how much money they could get for the seed. It almost looks like a Christmas tree up under here with all these beautiful red peppers. And I mean, they're solid red, fully ripe, ready to put a show sure enough hurting on somebody. Well, I was able to finally locate some gallon bags so I could go ahead and get this stuff picked so I could put it in the freezer. I had some of the quart ones, but I didn't want to mess with small bags like that. Just want to put them in a big bag. So I got a pile of bell peppers right here. Come off of nine plants down there. You'll see those coming up in just a minute. And a little over half a bucket of scorpion peppers. And this one right here is about three quarter full of the super daytil. Just amazing how many peppers come off of one plant. I'm going to dump these out in just a minute so you can make sure that there's nothing else hiding in the bottom of these buckets and I say what's in there is in there. But I want to tell you this real quick. One of the best things you can do to deter animals from eating your plants in the garden is mix up some hot pepper spray. I've tried it and I promise you they will leave it alone. My neighbor and an old guy over on the other road they plant a pretty good sized garden, but it's way back off the highway. And the deer and the groundhog have a field day in there. So I told him, I said, Mallory, fix up some of this hot pepper spray right here, spray it on there, and they will leave it alone. I guarantee you. So he came by to get some of the peppers, and I gave him my little small blender or a chopper mixer thing that we got from a yard sale for just a couple bucks. And I said, you don't want to use your blender from the kitchen. You don't want to get this uh, pepper oil on it because it might not come off. I said, also make sure you do it outside and you don't get downwind from it because it will take your breath away. Trust me, I know. Also, when you finish up, make sure you wash your hands. So the next day he comes, he brings my little blender back, puts it in the cabinet down there and comes inside the house. And I'm looking at him, he's got this pain look on his face. I said, what's the matter? He said, you didn't tell me that you have to scrub your hands when you finish with those peppers. I said, well, I told you to wash them real good. Turns out what he did when he finished uh, mixing up his pepper spray, he goes inside, washes his hands real quick, goes in there and goes to the bathroom. 
you kind of get an idea where this is going needless to say it set him on fire he will not be messing with any more hot peppers anymore without thoroughly washing his hands so let that be a warning to you this is not something you want to play around with if anybody is good at counting who wants to uh, stop this video and do it in slow motion and count these peppers feel free to do so i'd like to know how many were in this bucket but i ain't about to take the time to count them after i spend all that time picking them but this is the bucket of the day teal super day teal right here that's how many peppers came off of one plant and this is the bucket of scorpions right here the trinidad scorpion i don't think it's the hottest one in the world anymore but it's sure enough hot enough to do some damage This one little pile right here will make enough pepper spray for a very, very long time. And if you looked online and you've seen these things for sale, the folks get a pretty good price for them too. They do not come cheap. Anytime you see a pepper that's all crinkly like this, especially these that actually have the little scorpion tail on them, not all of them fully developed like that. But when you get a pepper like this, he is not to be played with. I did the same thing with some of my Camelot bell peppers, cut them back to about 18 inches tall, just a flat topped them and let them come back a little bit, then put the cages back in place. And to be sitting here going into the, uh, like the third week of June and have fully ripe peppers, that's just unheard of around here. Got some beautiful deep dark red peppers on here and you talk about something sweet, there's a big difference between a green bell pepper and one that is fully ripened and turned red. When you take some of these peppers and let them get fully ripe and bite into the end of it right here, it's almost like eating an apple. It is so sweet. The taste is totally different than what you get from a regular green bell pepper. These are excellent. And I imagine the taste would be similar for any other kind of bell pepper that you take and let it go to, uh, to full maturity regardless of whether it's supposed to be orange, yellow, red, or purple, whatever, I would think that once that thing gets fully mature, you get a whole lot more sweetness in it. These guys right here, to be able to have peppers this quality and this size right here at the uh, middle of June, that's a pretty cool deal. So if you have the space or the ability to overwinter your plants, please do it, whether you got them in a greenhouse or whether you got containers outside. If you can bring that container indoors, even if they're not really growing a whole lot, just keep that root system in place. Prune them back going into the winter and you can do like I do and just flat top it, cut everything like a hedge. You can do like Ray does and take your time and you know meticulously prune it. Either way will produce you a ton of peppers the following year. How will it do in the third year? I don't know, I haven't gotten that far. But I tell you this, looking at what I have in here, certainly with the bell peppers, I've got some more of all kinds of peppers planted outside and I don't need those. There's enough pepper plants here with the production that they have to supply my family and a whole lot of other families the rest of this year. You can only eat so many peppers. So again, at the end of the year, when you're trying to decide what to do with your pepper plants when the weather's turned cold, if you have them in containers or have an opportunity here in the greenhouse to overwinter those things, please do. Let them show you what they can do the second year. I think you'll be pretty happy you did it. So hope that was helpful. Y'all take care. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time. If you found this video to be helpful, informative, entertaining, or just downright funny, don't forget to subscribe.